Hi everybody, it's Chris, and this is DB3, the parts of the double bass. This is the bass, as if you didn't know that, and since this uh, video lesson series is for beginners and newcomers to the bass, like me, um, I'm going to cover the basics of the bass. So, um, the bass, the parts of the bass, uh, and the names of the bass are a lot like the human body. Um, Unlike the guitar, where this is called the headstock, this is actually called the scroll, and you can see if you look at it from the side, um, I can't really turn it, um, it's a scroll. These are tuners or tuning machines. Um, some people might call them pegs on the violin, and um, like cello and viola, they're actually wooden pegs that are wedged into the holes, but on the bass, because the tension of the strings is so high they have to use mechanical gears. Um, this is the peg box and uh, that's where the strings go and they wrap around posts that uh, attach to the, uh, the tuning machines. And it's like a worm gear and as you turn it it increases the tension and uh, tightens up the string. Um, the long black part is the fingerboard. It's usually made of ebony. Um, this is the neck. This is the body. Um, the body is divided into three parts. This is the upper bout, and down at the bottom is the lower bout. In the middle, because it looks like a C, it's called the C bout. Imagine that. So the base is kind of like the body and like the alphabet. You have the C bout, and then these holes are called F holes. And you can make up your own jokes about that offline if you want. And uh, the, uh, the shoulders on my bass are sloped, which makes it a little easier to uh, reach the upper reaches of the uh, fingerboard. Uh, I've seen some basses where the shoulders are more rounded, like a violin, um, but that's not the way mine is made. This part is the bridge. Um, I'm not sure what kind of wood that is. Might be oak. It looks like it's probably some kind of hardwood. And um, that's the, the main thing that transmits the sound of the vibrating, vibrating strings down to the top of the body. So that's really important. Uh, the bridges come in a couple, couple different styles. Uh, mine has adjustable uh, height adjusters in here. Uh, some bridges you'll see don't have those, so they cut them and adjust them to meet uh, the height that you want for the action that you need when you play. Uh, but mine you can adjust uh, yourself just by turning it up and down to make the strings go higher and lower. Um, this is the tail piece. It's also made out of ebony and there's a cord that comes down out of that tail piece and wraps around the end post uh, which holds the whole thing together. So if you loosen the strings this all gets really loose and that bridge will fall down and and everything will come apart. So it's all held together by the tension of the strings. Um, what else? Inside, you can't see it from out here, but directly under this uh, leg of the bridge, inside there's a, a round piece of wood that looks like, uh, like a wood dowel um, that's wedged between the, the top and the back of the base, and that's called the sound post. And that helps transmit the vibrations um, from the top to the back of the instrument. So when you play, the whole thing shakes, which is a cool feeling. Um, what else can I tell you? Let me look at my cheat sheet. Oh, uh, if you're new to the bass world, um, there are different names for the same thing. It's like some streets and some towns, they go by different names. And if you're not from that town, you have no idea what people are talking about. So uh, there's a whole bunch of different terms that people use to refer to the very same physical instrument. In the classical world, it's typically called the double bass, um, sometimes called contra bass, um, or string bass. In the jazz and blues world, um, it's often called the upright bass uh, to, uh, as opposed to the electric bass, which you play in a horizontal position. Um, 
in country like bluegrass, it may be called the uh, bass fiddle. Um, what else is there? Doghouse bass, I've heard. Bass viol, viol. I'm not sure even how to say that, and I don't know who uses that term. So if you know, write me and let me know. Um, I think that's most everything on my website. Um, you can find a diagram of the bass with um, the different parts labeled. Uh, oh, one other part I didn't mention, now that I look at my diagram, is up here where the strings first cross over. That's called the nut. It doesn't look like a nut to me. It doesn't look like a walnut, a hickory nut, or a nut out in the, at the hardware store. I don't know why they call it a nut, but it's the nut. Maybe the guy that made it was nuts. I don't know. Anyway, uh, that keeps the strings above the fingerboard right at the top. Otherwise, they would lie flat and you wouldn't get any sound. You know, you just get a, it'd be like this. It, uh, it just buzz. Anyway, that's what the nut does. Okay. Then there's the bow. This is my bow, uh, my new used bow that I just purchased from my instructor. And uh, it's made of Pernambuco wood, also known as Brazil wood, I've read. Um, it's a wood from a tree in Brazil. And uh, I've heard that it's getting kind of scarce, so more bows are made from other materials these days like uh, fiberglass or uh, maybe some kind of composite material. Uh, this part is the frog. There's a screw and a mechanism on the end that you turn which pulls the frog backwards and increases the tension on the, the bow hair. If it's too loose, it won't play. It won't generate any sound. So you need a little bit of tension uh, and you have to uh, fiddle with it to find the, the amount of tension that's just right for the way that you play. Uh, anyway, you turn that clockwise to tighten it, counterclockwise to loosen it. Um, there's a wrapping, a silver type wrapping around the, uh, uh, the bow stick and like a little leather here for your finger to grip onto. As you can see, this one is uh, a little, the silver is a little worn down. This bow is about 20 years old and uh, I purchased it from my bass instructor and he obviously used it quite a bit, but took very good care of it. Uh, this is the tip um, and this is the bow hair. The bow hair comes from um, horse tails. Most bows have white hair. This bow has black hair. And I've heard that black hair grips a little bit better, or it's a little more coarse. So it gives a little darker sound, I think, which is kind of cool. When I get it uh, rehaired at some point, I might try maybe white hair in it or uh, maybe a mixture. You know, see what the, the rehairing person thinks is a good way to go. Um, that's about it. And each bow has a different balance point. You can hold it and you can see where it will balance evenly. This bow is a little bit heavier in the tip than my original student bow that came with the base. Um, I've got that right here for comparison. This bow came with the base, um, and it's a K. Holtz bow, which is, I bet there's a million of these out there that have been shipped for student level violins and cellos and violas and basses. Um, I think it's fiberglass and has obviously white horse hair, but everything else is the same, basically. This one, I think, the 
Ballast Point is a little bit farther towards the frog. The benefit of having a little heavier tip is it makes up bows a lot easier to execute because you get more pressure down here on the string. So that's my bow and that's about all I know about the bow at this point. I hope that helped you. If you have any questions, send me a comment or an email, and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you very much for watching DB3, the parts of the base.